Hi everyone, it's Rabbi Dr. Jack Cohen. I'd like to share an amazing story that I read this week in one of the international Jewish magazines. It's a story, when I read it, I was amazed because I knew the individuals well, as I had the pleasure of teaching their young children, specifically Isaac's, when, and I'll get into the story, I'll tell you, Isaac Farhi's children, who were Chaim and David at the time, were my students for years in the Shabbat program where I taught in a shul in Brooklyn. Let me share with you this amazing story, the power of how Shabbat could save our lives. Isaac and Albert Farhi were Syrian immigrants that relocated to New York. They came from Shomer Shabbat families, they were wonderful people, I knew them extremely well. What I didn't know is what they did for a living as it wasn't my business to ask questions. But the article goes on, the story goes on to tell us how Isaac and Albert both were partners in a jewelry store on the outskirts of the Williamsburg community in Brooklyn. Some areas could be nice, some areas could be rather dangerous. Theirs was more on the near dangerous side. Anyway, they got together to sit together to eat a Shabbat meal by Isaac's house one Friday night. It was the middle of a winter evening and a Shabbat comes in early and they sat down. Albert was invited to Isaac's house when suddenly after they make a douche, the telephone starts to ring and it rings and rings and he has a voice answering machine answering, and, and the recording on the answering machine goes like this. This is the alarm company that protects your store. I just, we want to inform you that zone three has been compromised and someone needs to get to the store right away. So Isaac and Albert starting to wonder, what are we going to do here? Now they happened to own a jewelry store in which they had over half a million dollars of gold and jewelry in assets and they had put it all in the safe. They did not insure their store. They could not insure the valuables because it was so expensive. If a person were to take out insurance on such an inventory, there would be absolutely no profit in it because it would be outrageous to try to insure such an incredible amount of inventory. So anyway, an hour later, the telephone rings again with the same message. This is the alarm company telling you that zone three has been compromised. And what Isaac had done is because he couldn't afford to take out insurance for such an inventory because it was so expensive, they had split the store up into three zones, three alarm zones, so that if alarm one or alarm two would go off, then they would be able to race down to the store or the alarm company would come down and see what's going on, although the alarm company can't go in unless they're authorized by the owners. Anyway, as they're trying to enjoy their meal and they're wondering, is my entire life going up in smoke right now? All the money that I have all of my possessions of valuables uh, is all invested into the jewelry which is in the safe which they're thinking now by now is all gone and every hour the phone is ringing and Albert tells Isaac what can we do it's from Hashem Hashem decides our fate nothing can happen unless Hashem rules it we have to have emunah bitachon it's all going to be okay and so Isaac tried to enjoy his meal as he writes but I couldn't enjoy my meal my wife served as a, a delicious meal but to me it was tasteless as they went to bed the ringing would go on Every hour, could you imagine if you owned a store, half a million dollars of valuables are in that store, your entire life savings is invested into that store. You couldn't sleep, he couldn't sleep the whole night. He went to shul the very next morning, he came home to have his Shabbos suda, and the same story, the ringing of the phone, and throw, throughout the day he couldn't enjoy himself, he was beside himself in worry. Finally, after Shabbos was over, they made Abdullah, Albert and Isaac got into the car, hopped into the car, drove down to the store, and they saw an amazing sight. The gates were still there. It didn't seem that there was a forced break-in or entry. So Isaac tapped in the code and the gates went up. They opened the lights and to their astonishment and absolute surprise, every one of their displays was smashed. And it looked like it was looted, but thank God what they had left behind were just cheap watches and some lightly inexpensive jewelry. So now they wondered what happened to the safe, which was in the back. And they were afraid, perhaps there's someone in there. Anyway, they turned the lights on in the back and Isaac went inside and he saw the safe there. And he was wondering, how did they break in when there was no sign of forced entry from the gate? Anyway, with sweat beads trickling down his face, Isaac started to tap the code into the safe and he forgot and then he did it again finally until he opened it. And he was absolutely in shock. All the valuables, the half a million dollars of inventory was still there. He said to his brother, Albert, Albert, you got to come. So Albert ran in, he saw that, wow, what a miracle Hashem made for them, that all of their valuables were still there. Isaac was inside the back of the store when he heard Albert talking to someone in the front. He came out, and who was it? It was the police. They had come to the scene because they saw the gates were up. Normally that area is very quiet and dark at night. And they asked for their ID. So Isaac and Albert produced their ID and told them, we own this store, this is our store. It looks like we've been robbed. So the police called in for an investigator. They stepped outside and the investigator came back in and he says, well, I don't understand something. Did your alarm trip off? He said, yes. We were notified throughout the night, last night and this morning. So the police investigator asked him a question. How come you didn't run down? So they explained to him, we're Sabbath observant, we're Orthodox Jews, we're not allowed to violate the Sabbath, we're not allowed to go into a car, we're not allowed to answer a telephone. He says, wow, you didn't do anything about it while you being robbed? He goes, no. 
And then he says, come, come, come here. Let me show you something. The investigator told him, do you know how these people operated? And he took him to the back. On top of the safe, there was a little skylight. You see what they did? They opened the skylight and they helped themselves down with a rope and they triggered the alarm purposely. And when you didn't show up, they kept triggering the alarm again and again and again. And he says, to him, he tells him his was their plan. They were going to waste hours upon hours trying to saw open the safe because it's so hard. This is a stainless steel safe. Instead, what they wanted to do was to get you to try to goad you to come down to the store where they would then hold you up at gunpoint, force you to open up the safe and then kill you. And he went on to tell them that we've had numerous deaths, numerous murders in this area with this same type of tactic where they trigger the alarm, they cause the owner to come down, the owner comes down, they then hold them up with a gun, they said they force them to open up the safe, they grab all of the valuables and they kill them. He says, you have to know something, sir, Mr. Farhi, both Mr. Farhi, Isaac and Albert, you got to realize that your Sabbath saved your life. If not for your Sabbath, you would have been both murdered without any doubt whatsoever. Ladies and gentlemen, we see here an extraordinary story here. Here these individuals had solid imunam bitachon Hashem. They were able to persevere, they held out, they didn't violate the Shabbat, they came back $5,000 of merchandise, which was a pittance compared to their lives. But the most incredible part of the story, as they write, was like this. Several months later, the price of gold shot up extraordinarily. They sold their stock in gold for an incredible profit, which was 10 to 15 times what they had lost, and they had recouped their losses even more. That's how Hashem rewarded them for having kept the Shabbat, persevered, and their emuna and faith and trust in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. They eventually went out of this business. But it's an incredible story to tell. It gives us chizak about how Shabbos can protect us, how Hashem protects us. And the song goes like this. Ki Yishmer Shabbat Hashem Yishmereni. When I keep Shabbos, Shabbat, Hashem will keep me and will watch over me. And so I think it's an incredible, valuable lesson that we should not only learn from this story, but we should forward this story to every one of our friends or family members that doesn't keep Shabbat and show them and impress upon them, look how Shabbat saved these two people's lives. They were going to be absolutely for sure murdered that they had walked into that store and they were not showing Shabbat. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us this gift of Shabbat. Have an extraordinary week. Shabbat Shalom.